Hi, saya Wan Zalihah Rabi dan anda sedang menonton Ciri Khas and Nation Rise of Malaysia di saluran National Geographic, Sempena Hari Kemerdekaan. Malam ini kami akan mempersembahkan kisah legenda bola sepak Malaysia yang menjadi sumber inspirasi rakyat kita. Dia dikenali sebagai Supermok. For a brief period in Malaysia's history, one man's name resounded like no other. Soccer player Mokhtar Dahari rose from a humble background to carve a place in his nation's history. But at the peak of his fame, Malaysia's greatest ever football player would be cut down by a tragic illness. What made the man they call Supermok so exceptional? And did it also lead to his tragic end? Twenty years on, Mokhtar Dahari's family and closest friends break their silence to reveal the untold truth about the man known to the world as Supermok. That was the best of time in Malaysian football. Mancini, pada Isa, balik kepada Mokhtar, serang Mokhtar, goal! As a footballer, he was certainly the greatest that I've ever met in this country. Between the 70s and, and uh, right up until the mid-80s, it was the real golden era of Malaysian football. It was Mokhtar Dahari spearheading the team. Kepada Mokhtar Dahari, I must say that throughout my career as a sports journalist, I've never seen another player like him. He was one of a kind. There was not another player like him. To me, Mukta Dahari was simply my dad. But as I grew older, I started to understand how the impact he has done for Malaysian football. After 19 years, people still remember who is Mokhtar Dahari, what he has done to the country, what he has done for Selangor. I can still remember clearly, it's in 1988, my father accompanied me to the school for the first time, that is my standard one. Everyone is looking at us and it is quite an awkward moment for me because to, the, to them, uh, he is Mokhtar Dahari, one of the greatest footballers in Malaysia. And, but for me, he is just a father who accompanied his son to the first day of school. But at that time, I realized that he is a public figure. Uh, every woman of him will be noticed. Quite a few occasions where people will come up to me and say, are you the daughter of Mota Dahari? And I answer yes, and I can see their faces lit up and just astonished by what I just said. People idolize him. I specifically remember one occasion where a stranger came and approached me and said, uh, Excuse me, are you Muqtada Hari's daughter? And I said, yes. And he just said, can I shake your hand? And I said, why? He just continued and said, even though I don't get to shake your father's hand, but I'm so proud enough to have sh shook the daughter's hand. At that point, I felt the extension of his fame. Me and my friends, we grew up idolizing Mokhtar Dahari. And each time when we played two side uh, football matches and all that, all of us would be scrambling for the jersey number 10. And uh, I've been following Mokhtar uh, by reading about his scoring powers in the newspapers. And of course, there were not too many matches that were shown live on TV back then. So we had to follow uh, most of the matches uh, via radio telecast. You get to see papers coming up with a headline the next day, Supermog wins it for Selangor, Supermog strikes again, that kind of headline. And it became, a, uh, became a synonymous with football fans then. They would always call him Supermog, being the superstar that he was.
But the man who became known as Supermon owes his success to something in his humble childhood. From an early age, Mukta was different. And now it seems possible that his tragic early death may be linked to the very things that contributed to his success. The first son of Amina Binti Shari Khan and lorry driver Dahari Abeng, Mokhtar Dahari moved to Kampung Pandan near the heart of Kuala Lumpur at the age of 11. In a neighborhood where most were poor, football and badminton required little equipment. Everyone could play, but Mokhtar Dahari stood out. I can remember when he was small, he used to play a lot of uh, games. He can play football, he can play uh, badminton, sepatakra, even hockey also he played for the school. Every evening, without fail, he would definitely go to the football field at Kampung Pandan. He played with his friends, neighbors, and then sometimes also he played with those senior players. He was my idol. And then, even when I was uh, a small kid also, I would like to be like him. But I know I couldn't be as good as him because he was very different. He was very different. Mukhtar's early sporting talent won him a place at one of Malaysia's most respected high schools, Victoria Institution. Mukhtar was chosen to play for the school team, and sport was well on its way to becoming his life. He always cycled to school. He will cycle to school from Kampung Banan to Victoria Institution in KL. I think that was about half an hour journey. La. When he came back, he always uh, trained. Or sometimes he came back from school and then he rest for a while and then he went back to the school for training. Nah, imbas kembali uh, perkenalan saya dengan Mota ialah pada uh, akhir tahun uh, 70-an di mana kita ada perlawanan persahabatan uh, bola sepak di antara pasukan saya di Datuk Kamat dan pasukan uh, dia di Kemupandan. Ridwan Abdullah and Mokhtar Tahari would become close friends. The two had a lot in common. Kami rapat. Memang kami rapat. Saya yang Mokhtar tidak datang daripada keluarga yang begitu mewah. Eh. Kalau kami nak bekerja, kami nak uh, bekerja keras, kami ingin uh, melakukan yang terbaik. Walaupun pada masa itu, uh, balatan sukan seperti but bola tidaklah begitu mahal. Pada kalau katakan masa itu, kalau kata RM60, dah begitu mahal pada kami untuk belikan belikan but bola tapi kami masih lagi boleh bekerja keras untuk melakukan dia kadang-kadang kita bermain dengan kaki ayam untuk bermain bola sepak itu yang buat kita gigih untuk melakukan sesuatu untuk meningkatkan kita punya bola sepak untuk bola sepak in 1971 Mokhtar and Ridwan were both selected for the Selangor team in the Burnley Youth Cup kita telah menang besar dengan salah satu golnya dijaringkan oleh Mukhtar. Inilah gol yang pertama yang dijaringkan oleh Mukhtar dalam kerjanya sebagai pemain bola sepak yang mewakili Negeri Selangor. Mukhtar's performance won him a place in the Selangor State Senior Team. Number nine, Mukhtar. He was just 18 years old. Even his long-suffering parents were beginning to appreciate his preoccupation with football. Even though my late brother and my late father, you know, seldom talk at home, I could see from my father, father, late father face that he was very happy and he was very proud to see that my late brother represented Slangon because it's not an easy you not know, to represent Slangon during that day. Within months, Mokhtar was named in the Slangon team for the Malaysia Cup tournament. He scored nine goals during the tournament. Two months after that, Mokhtar Dahari was playing for his country, scoring ten goals in international matches in his first year as Malaysian football entered what is widely considered its golden era. He had graduated from school football to representing his nation in just two years. I don't then, just as it appeared Malaysia had a new superstar in the making, the nation's budding golden age was turned upside down. Someone stole the motorbike the new soccer star relied on to get to training. 
and Mokhtar uh, at that time was only a clerk, you know. He was a clerk with PKNS. Uh, he wasn't earning a big salary back then. And without the bike, he was like losing one foot of, of his, you know. He was crippled. Mokhtar announced he was quitting competitive football. The dream of a super mock seemed to be merely illusion. Kita bertemu kembali dalam Siri Khas A Nation Rises Malaysia di saluran National Geographic bersama saya Wan Zaleha Radhi. Bakat Mokta Dahari memang tersulah sejak zaman muda lagi. Tetapi statusnya sebagai seorang bintang mula menonjol pada tahun 1975 ketika menentang pasukan Arsenal dari England. The theft of his motorbike left Malaysia's amateur football star Mokhtar Dahari unable to get to training and games. The player announced he was quitting. But his sudden rise had already won the hearts of football fans. The fans all read it behind him. There was a lot of sentiments, outpouring of sentiments from the fans, saying that if someone has to steal a bike, why has it got to be Mokhtar's bike? And from then on, the Slango team took the cue to rally uh, behind Mokhtar. In fact, they were also passing the hat around for donations to get him to buy a new bike. And a motorcycle company actually came forward and uh, presented him with a new motorcycle. So because of that, Mokhtar decided to come back. Mokhtar Dahari's fans were to be richly rewarded. The teams Mokhtar played for achieved unprecedented successes. Malaysia won its first soccer medal in the Asia Games. The nation beat South Korea and Japan to win the Merdeka Cup. Slangor went on to its greatest period of dominance in the Malaysia Cup. The successes sparked a football fever that has never been equaled. Every time Slango plays, we get 25,000. The stadium is almost full. And whenever we play in the final, 30,000, you know, overwhelming, you know, overflowing. The match between Selangor and Singapore at the National Stadium uh, is always something which all the fans in Singapore would wait for. In fact, the ticket for this 55,000 uh, sitting capacity uh, is always sold out one week before the game. So the atmosphere here is electrifying. The game starts at 7, but people will come at 3 o'clock just to wait for us to play the game. At one of Selangor's games here, a fan was killed. There was a stampede outside the stadium, you know, people queuing up just to get in. But that's the fervor and the eagerness of the fans to want to get into the stadium to watch the game. The surge of interest had good cause. Mokhtar Tahari scored 19 goals in one Malaysia Cup tournament. He scored five goals in one game against the Philippines. 24 goals in international games in one year. The boy from the neighborhoods had matured into a veritable soccer machine. As years goes by, I see there's someone special in the Malaysian squad. This guy is, well, his whole body full of muscle. You look at his body from the head to the toe, all full of muscle. Huh? It frightened the delight out of you. He's a di different kind of, he's different from other footballers. He can dribble, say, 50 meters, and he can shoot the ball at 100 miles an hour. He reminds me of Maradona, you know. You look at Maradona and Mokhtar, the build is about the same. Mokhtar Dari was blessed with the physique that will put so many bodybuilders to shame. Masa